Today on the Magnum Report, I'm going to do my top five list for the biggest crowd pops of 2023 in WWE. Who's going to be on top of this list? Who's going to be number one? Is it going to be LA Knight? Yeah. Is it going to be The Rock? John Cena? Who's going to be number one? Join me as I go through my top five list here on the Magnum Report. Drop that intro. Welcome to the Magnum Report. I'm your host, Mark Magnum, and today I'm doing my top five list for the biggest crowd pops of 2023 in WWE. So before I get started, I would like to say please like, subscribe, share. Also hit that notification icon so you don't miss out on new content. But let's get into it. Before I get into the actual list, I've got a couple honorable mentions because I only did the top five, but there's a couple other ones that were big pops I felt this year in WWE. And my first one on that on that note would be L.A. Knight when he came out and he interrupted Roman Reigns before they did their big contract signing leading into the pay-per-view map premium live event match that they had, I believe, over in Saudi Arabia. So, I mean, it was a big moment. It was a big shock because, I mean, for the longest time, nobody's I mean, that's one thing they haven't done is have somebody inter, you know interrupt Roman Reigns. So, I mean, it was something that was shocking, was different. And it was a great thing for LA Knight because I was right at that point where the fans, I mean, the fans were already on to him, but they were just on to him even more because it seemed like they were, yes, they were finally giving us what we wanted with LA Knight. And he was, he's right there on the cusp. He's cooled off a little bit since that match, but in that moment, he, he couldn't have been any hotter. And I just want to throw him on this honorable list mention just because I believe he deserves it. And then my other honorable mention was the return of John Cena. And with John Cena, I, I I can take him or leave him. I'm never, like I've said on pre previous podcasts, I'm not the biggest Cena fan, but just watching him come back. And he, I mean, he came back strictly for the main part, just for the, the writer's strike. And he was, I guess, bored and didn't have anything to do, but the fans were into his comeback. And I'm, I'm happy that he put Solo over at the, you know, at the end of all that before he went on back to the acting. So I'm happy that at least on his way out, he put some guys over. He put, you know, Austin Theory over, even though I don't think that did a damn thing <laughs> for his overall career. But I I'm happy that at least he was not just going, coming back and just burying guys. He was trying to add to the program. He was trying to do his part. So I just want to give LA Knight and John Cena their, their you know, their come up. It's their, their due, their just due, and um, show a little bit of respect to him. So into my actual list and my number five, is Randy Orton, his return as Survivor Series after being away for 18 long months. I mean, there was a lot of rumors where a lot of people were saying that maybe he's not going to come back. The doctors, were, it's from the reports, allegedly, the, the doctors were saying that maybe it's not the greatest idea that you come back and then Survivor Series happened and he's back and daddy's back as he likes to keep saying. So, I mean, I'm happy that he's back because Randy Orton's one of my favorites and I just want to see what he's going to do now because he's getting older. He's my age. So what can he do? What, what's he got left? And I'm not saying it like he doesn't have any gas left in the tank. I just want to see what he's going to do going forward. So I'm interested and I'm happy. But the crowd pop that he got at Survivor Series, just the way they kind of did it where he hadn't showed up the entire day and played that whole card like they weren't, you know, the team Cody wasn't sure, which I still, I want on a sidebar, I think it's kind of funny that Cody was the captain of the Survivor Series team at War Games, even though Seth Rollins was the heavyweight champion. Just a sidebar, sorry, I, I digress. Back onto what I was saying though with Randy Orton, just the way they made it seem as if he wasn't gonna be there or they were playing that, you know, maybe, maybe, we don't know. And then he ended up showing up and just that crowd pop, it made it worth it them playing that little game of not knowing because it was definitely something that the fans wanted to see, I wanted to see, and I'm happy that he's back. Now, into my number four, and that is The Rock's return, surprise return, when they were in Colorado back a few months back in, uh, I believe that was in the summer. And with Pat McAfee and it was an awesome moment because you're just sitting there watching and it was a surprise enough that Pat McAfee was on the show because 
he's not on he's not on WWE programming as much anymore these days with him doing his own show on ESPN and the stuff that he does for ESPN with the college football and all that. He's he's a busy man, so I get why he's not been around. But it was a surprise enough that Matt that McAfee was there, and then you have wow the Rock show up out of nowhere, and you have the interaction between the Rock and Austin Theory, and I, and I just spoke earlier about. Austin Theory going against John Cena at WrestleMania and how it really didn't do that much for him. I'm not saying that The Rock being in the ring with Austin Theory did anything for The Rock, but I, to me, it felt like he got over a whole lot better in the promo he did with The Rock as opposed to the one that he did with against John Cena because Cena ate him up. The Rock ate him up as well, but at least in this one, it seemed like Austin Theory had a little bit of a retort. He had a little bit of a rebuttal. He had some kind of smart remark to say to come back at at the rock and at least it was better than that the whole situation with the rock bottom and the people's uh, that was great it's the rock it's always good to see him so i was happy and it was a massive crowd pop because like i said it was a massive shock i mean yes if you watched espn that day they had showed that he was in the area but some people don't connect the dots all the times and realize that oh well he's in the area will he actually show up and triple h pulls some strings it appears and the rock showed up randomly on a on an episode of smackdown i think it was awesome but anyway into my number three and this this is when we're going to start getting into the home field advantage situation here but this will be Sami Zayn's entrance at the elimination chamber against roman reigns when they were in montreal my God, that reaction, it was thunderous. It seemed like it was never going to end. And Sammy, I, I hate to say it, and I hate to be one of those guys, but I still think Sammy should have won because when you look at what Roman Reigns has done since defeating Sammy and then defeating Cody and then defeating Jim or Jay and then defeating LA, not, I mean, Roman really hasn't done too much with the title since... WrestleMania, even since this match, really. And with with all that he's done, it would have been great to see it on somebody else. Yes, Cody should have got it as well. But in this moment, with how red hot Sammy was at that time, with him leaving the bloodline and just all the things that were going into that storyline and the character work and everything that they put into that to get fans just talking and just conversating about what if. I mean, yeah, more than likely Roman's going to win, but what if? What if Sammy does win? What if they do pull the trigger and have it to where Sammy's the guy? Obviously, they didn't do that, unfortunately, for Sammy Zayn. And I think that, I don't think his run since has been bad, but he's definitely another one, just like LA Knight, like I said earlier, that has kind of cooled off a little bit. Fans still love him, don't get me wrong, but he's not at the heights of his popularity like he was at the beginning of the year. So it's just a shame to see that. Him losing to Roman with a lot of guys, when they lose to Roman, they not fall off a little bit, but they lose a little bit of shine and a little bit of cred and a, and a little bit of something that they had massively going in that they lose a little bit going out. So I think it's a big misstep by WWE on some of the matches. And I know they're trying to get Roman to the point where he's closer to Hogan. And I mean, he's not going to get past Bob Backlund. He's not going to, I don't think they should get him past Hogan. And I know they're not going to get past Bruno San Martino. That's like eight years of Roman being champion. And I don't think fans are going to sit for this too much longer. So it is what it is. Now, into my number two, into my next one. That's another home field advantage for somebody. And this number two is CM Punk and his return. Again, at Survivor Series War Games. And it was a massive shock. They'd have been reporting for weeks that you know WWE had lost interest and they weren't really looking to sign CM Punk right now maybe later but not right now and then the Survivor Series match gets over with and Randy Orton and Cody Rose and all the other guys Seth Rollins and them are all standing tall and all of a sudden we hear static and CM Punk's, CM Punk's music hits and the place goes banana like I've said in previous podcasts and it's great I'm happy that he's back. A lot of people are still hating and, oh, they're just waiting for the wheels to fall off and it's all doom and gloom and they just can't wait for him to screw up. Like I've said, I don't think he's going to screw up. I think he realizes this is his last true opportunity to get into a company that's going to, he's going to make significant money in. I don't think he's going to screw this up. I think he's towing the line, like I've said, and I don't think that he's there to ruffle feathers. I think he's there maybe to, you know, throw the middle finger in Tony Khan's direction, but I don't think he's there to do what he did at AEW, even though, like I've said previously, I don't think all of it was his fault. 
but he he definitely added to the problem and and threw a little more gasoline on the fire so i get why some people still have an attitude or just a little bit of standoffishness with 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 cm punk i get it i understand but i don't think that's what he's here for this time i think he's trying to finish out his wrestling career the way he wants to in a company that i think that's going to book him in a way that he wants to be booked and also have some of them things like i've said on that bucket list that he that he still hasn't checked off and that that main event wrestlemania that royal rumble win there's a few things left in cm punk's career that he still hasn't done and i think that's why he's back and i think that's why he's still wrestling and everybody can be cynical and act like he's back for other reasons or he's back to screw things up or he's back to create chaos in wwe like he did in aew i don't think that's the case but anyway i've digressed far enough on cm punk into my number one and i mean some people might say i'm crazy for this one but just the overall reaction for number my number one is bad bunny and his entrance at, at 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 backlash it was phenomenal him and damian priest put on a great street fight it was an awesome match i mean i'm still i'm not going to be one of those ones in the camp that don't think that a celebrity should be able to come in and put on a match as good as they as, as some of these guys like the logan pauls and some of these guys that have been coming in lately and have been doing but it was still a good match i'm not going to poo poo on bad bunny at all because i like i like bad bunny i've you know, I like some of his music, even though I don't understand the majority of it. I still enjoy what Bad Bunny is and what he brings to WWE and the respect that he shows to the wrestling business. So I appreciate Bad Bunny, but that crowd reaction, just hearing the fans singing his song, I mean, there's nothing like it. There was nothing like it all year, I don't think. And that's why Bad Bunny is number one on my top five list. But what do you guys think? What's your number one on your top five list? What do you think was the biggest the hugest crowd pop of this year since we're at the end of the year we might as well conversate about it so give me something in the comments let me know what you guys think i'm about to let you guys know that we're about to start up season two of the mark and the fan wrestling podcast real soon so if you want please go over i'm gonna put a link in the description so you can find that channel as well and make sure you describe subscribe to that channel and also please subscribe to this channel like and hit that notification icon so you do not miss out on any out on any new content that i'm about to put out so this has been another edition of the magnum report thank you for watching